Florida State Seminoles are galloping toward a possible national championship. Their cordial coach and head chief, Bobby Bowden, is on a bounty hunt. Today, he can tomahawk his 200th career win while his daring, flaring Seminoles rendezvous with their biggest rival. They want the world to know that they have the longest winning streak in the nation. And today, they'll try to spear Miami and continue on the warpath toward their ultimate destiny. The Miami Hurricanes are the most fearless team in college football. However, last month, the Hurricanes were humbled by BYU and took a mighty fall from the top perch of the football poles. But don't give up on the Hurricane Watch. The swirling winds have returned with Air Erickson. Will Florida State be able to weather this storm? It's the Seminoles and the Canes coming up next. CFA Saturday, we welcome you to the Sunshine State. On a day like this, yes, many will hit the beach. Others will take the boat out onto the warm waters of Key Biscayne. Of course, there's always room for a little golf or even the matinee at the local fronton. But today, the biggest attraction in this tropical playground is here at the Orange Bowl. Second-ranked Florida State about to mingle with ninth-ranked Miami. The Grand Old Orange Bowl in its 53rd year, five Super Bowls played here, all of those New Year's Day classics, yet they're expecting this to be the largest crowd ever for Florida State and Miami. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Jim Nance, and welcome to one of the biggest games of the year in college football. Florida State has the longest winning streak in the nation, 14 consecutive victories. Miami has the longest win streak at home, 33 straight wins here at the Orange Bowl. Obviously, something has to give. This is an absolute must-win game for Miami, having already been straddled with one loss. And for Florida State, they have seen their national championship hopes swept away in recent years with losses to Miami in 87 and 88. Just how powerful are these two teams? Well, in the last three years, they each have finished in the top three in the final rankings. Now, for more on this Battle of the Giants, let me bring in my colleague in the booth. Right now, he's on the sidelines. A welcome to Tim Brandt. Tim? Jim, the last time the nation saw Miami, the Hurricanes were losing to Ty Detmer and BYU. They've lost, or they've won, rather, two games since, rather convincingly. They know another loss will take them out of the national championship picture earlier than any time the past decade. Consequently, the personality of the team has changed. No more big play celebration. And I want you to hear Miami All-American Mike Sullivan talk about this game. His remarks are really measured, almost calculated. Florida State is, is a, it's a hard game for us to go into because it's the one game in the season where we can't say, well, we have better athletes. And if we get backed into a corner, you know, we can blow them out in the fourth quarter because we can play harder. Because uh, position for position, we, you know, we might be, uh, you know, we might be a little bit behind them now, you know, because they are lining up just some, some great athletes. And to watch film, it just, it kind of blows your minds at times because, you know, you think you, this is the only place in the country where you could see speed on a defensive line and you could see linebackers are going to drop off in the coverage. And it's just not the case anymore. When's the last time you heard a Miami player give the edge to the opponent, especially here in the Orange Bowl? Keep in mind, Miami's got a quarterback who's a Heisman Trophy candidate, Craig Erickson. So is it a setup? Are they ready to explode? Well, I can tell you this, Miami better play well. They're going against the Florida State team. That is 4-0, ranked number two in the nation, and a head coach going after a milestone. For more on that, let me now take you across the field to my colleague, John Dockery. What's up, Doc? Well, thank you, Tim Brandon. If you talk about Florida State, you certainly have to talk about Bobby Bowden. And today, Bobby Bowden can accomplish what only 10 other men have done in the history of Division I-A college football, and that, my friends, is win 200 games. But Bowden is a special human quality as well. He's the kind of coach that I would have loved to have played for, to have my kids taught by, influenced by. He's compassionate, sensitive, smart, and more than anything else, he's a man who loves a game that he's fought to stay close to for 50 years. As a young man, rheumatic fever kept Bobby Bowden out of sports, but never far from the action as he played trombone in the high school band. Bobby managed to convince doctors to let him play later in high school as he became a good enough football player to be offered a scholarship to Alabama. 
later transferring, he started Howard College. Bobby's career always included his growing family, and his coaching career started back at his alma mater, Howard, in Birmingham, Alabama. After several assistant coaching jobs, West Virginia became his first big-time opportunity. And finally, in 1976, he was appointed head coach at Florida State, where his status today is close to that of sainthood. 31 years of coaching, 199 wins, Bobby Bowden is on the doorstep of a milestone. Well, uh, it really doesn't mean that much to me now. I think after I retire one of these days, get out of coaching, if I can live that long, uh, it would be, might be nice to look back on. But I, right now, it don't interest me, because you always got one more ball game to play. The thing that I would like to keep going is, is 14. We've got 14 in a row. I'd like it to be 15. That's, that's what I'd like to see. And the Florida going. State players just out of the locker room backstage know what's at stake. Number 15, of course, will also mean number 200 for Bobby Bowden, Jim Nance. A lot on the line. National championship implications. Florida State is ready. Back to you. Florida State trails only Notre Dame in the rankings. Miami is ninth in the polls. It's interesting. Last year, Miami was ranked second going into this game, and Florida State was ranked ninth. Just the opposite. Florida State won that game in Tallahassee as the Hurricanes committed six turnovers. A win today for Florida State would equal the school record for consecutive victories. And here they come, the Seminoles. Sunshine State right after this. CBS Sports presents College Football. Live from the Orange Bowl in Coral Gables, Florida. It's the Florida State Seminoles versus the Miami Hurricanes. Today's CFA game is sponsored by today's Chevrolet, who invites you to see why more people are winning with the heartbeat of America. UPS for guaranteed overnight delivery from coast to coast. UPS runs the tightest ship in the shipping business. And by Budweiser, the king of beers, remember no when to say when. Kind of weather you would expect from Miami. Sunny and hot, 89 degrees. And the winds out of the east. Right to left winds on your television screen. Carlos Huerta will kick for Miami. Miami. Won the toss, elected to defer to the second half. Kick goes through the hands of Eric Terrell. A touchback, and the Seminoles will begin from the 20. With quarterback Brad Johnson, a junior from Black Mountain, North Carolina. He's a tall one, six feet, six inches tall. In the backfield, Edgar Bennett is the fullback, and Amp Lee is the tailback. The receivers, a redshirt freshman, Matt Fryer, and Lawrence Dossey. A leftover from the Fab Four days at Florida State. Reggie Johnson is a senior tight end from Pensacola. Right away, Amp Lee gets the carry and good yardage near the first down at the 30 and a tackle by free safety Darrell Williams of Miami. Offensive line opening up a hole on the 
First play from scrimmage. Robbie Baker is the center. He'll be tested today. Miami feels with Maryland and Curry on a defensive line. They can get to him, put pressure on him. Here's the rest of it. Haynes has been banged up. Mike Morris has been banged up. This line is not big. It weighs 280 without Baker, but then the average of the line comes way down. So he is the key. We'll keep an eye on today. A first down for Florida State. A 10-yard carry by Amp Lee. Johnson just tripping after the center snap and a four-yard loss. Mentioned he's six feet, six inches tall, but he is a former basketball player. Started, in fact, for Pat Kennedy's Seminole basketball team, but a little mix-up here. Look at that. Mike Moore stepped right on his foot. That'll take you down every time. Morris is 287 pounds. Johnson just barely over 210. Call it a loss of five. Second and 15. The screen is dropped by Amp Lee. The Hurricanes on defense. Hamlet and Miller are the defensive ends. Inside, Russell Maryland, Lombardi, an Outland Trophy finalist, along with Shane Curry. The middle linebacker, he's been their top tackler the last two years, Maurice Crum. And Darren Smith and Jesse Armstead, very aggressive. The corners, Smith and Bailey, and the safeties, Curly Brown and Darrell Williams. Third and 15 for Florida State. Running the football is Amp Lee. Knocked out of bounds, well short of the first. Roland Smith forced him out. Amp Lee is a sophomore from Chipley, Florida, and he takes over the position manned last year by Dexter Carter. And now they bring out the punter. John Wimberly, who's had some problems this year in the first four games. Miami will try to pressure him too, Jim. He sacked one last week. He also had one block, and they want to go after him a little bit today. Wesley Carroll, a threat, as the returner for the Hurricanes. First kick bounces around inside the 30. Bowden will be pleased with that. 44-yard punt. Craig Erickson comes onto the field. The senior Heisman candidate, 10 and 1 as a starter. He missed this game last year. Stephen McGuire from Brooklyn, New York, a sophomore, is the lone running back. Three receivers for the Canes. Randall Thrill Hill, Lamar Thomas, who can really jump, and Wesley Carroll. And the tight end, the reliable Rob Chudzinski. Now, the Hurricanes committed turnover last year on their first play from scrimmage, setting the tone for that game. Today, they run with McGuire. Joe Ostazewski makes the tackle after a four-yard game. Jim, Miami feels strongly that it can run the football against Florida State. Look at the size of these guys now. Here's Handy inside, 278. It's an offensive line, which really has lacked continuity because of injuries and moving players. It only goes six deep. It also lacks some consistency. But Miami feels strongly it can run the football. It feels it has to do that today to be successful. Randy Bethel is in at tight end. McGuire out the most. Second down. Erickson down the sidelines. Intended for Thomas. Craig Erickson will face Joe Ostazewski at nose tackle. His twin brother, Henry, is one of the defensive tackles, along with Carl Simpson. Linebacker is a sensational freshman, Marvin Jones, from here in Miami, by the way, and Kirk Carruthers. Anthony Moss on the outside. Howard Deacons is the other outside backer. Third down, five. Pass is fired to Carroll. They're going to call it incomplete. John Weish on the coverage for Florida State. Interesting defensive scheme by Florida State that time. They went with two deep and a zone underneath. Had everybody coming up waiting for that short pass. Paul 
Snyder, who's the new punter this year for Miami, taking over for Tim Kalau. But he faces a dangerous return man for Florida State, this Paul Snyder. He does have the wind at his back, and although he takes a stutter step, he's a two-step two punter, so he gets it out fairly quickly. Alan Foster, please report to the stadium manager's office immediately. Alan Foster. The clock is still running, although the last play was an incompletion, so they're trying to reset this brand new new scoreboard, which is in its second week, $2 million scoreboard addition, the Orange Bowl. Terrell Buckley, a sophomore, exciting big play man on defense. He was banged up coming into this game. What's the latest on his uh, injury status, Doc? You know, Jim, I watched him in the pre-game uh, pre warm-ups, and he was about 90, 95%. But if you watch him closely, he's limping ever so slightly. So this is an interesting matchup. The great punt coverage of Miami, who last year only allowed two yards total, this year only three yards in returns, against a great punt returner who may not be at 100% right now. Interesting also, Jim, you saw Miami test Buckley on that first drive when they try to go downtown against him. That's one of the keys to the game, how well Terrell Buckley can play. Back to you, Jim. He's a very confident guy. We were talking to him yesterday, so I'm not sure that's a limp or that's part of his confident gait. He has returned two punts this year already for touchdowns. He'll have a chance for a return here. Buckley near midfield. And a special teams tackle by Maurice Crump, the starting middle linebacker. There is a flag down back near the original line of scrimmage. 39-yard punt, 15-yard return. Holding for a Aha. It's a good break for Florida State. Takes them away from midfield now. Gives Miami's defense a little bit more room. Florida State post scrimmage kick enforcement. It'll be first down. Penalty assessed against the re return. So an exchange of punts here early in Florida State and Miami. As the Miami coach led them to the national championship, a Sugar Bowl victory over Alabama. Here are the current top 10 standings, according to the Associated Press. Now here's a running play in the meantime. Amp Lee dropped for a loss. tackle was Shane Curry along with Jesse Armstead so again Florida State is ranked second in the next five Tennessee Oklahoma Nebraska Miami and yes Steve Spurrier's Gators are 10 so three from the state in the top 10 ironically last year these two teams were the exact opposite with Florida State nine, Miami two Baker in as a receiver. Target there is Baker. And a catch for a short game. It was up about third and eight. Robert Bailey was on the coverage. Shannon Baker. Seven receptions, three for scores this year. Florida State early in the year has not gone to the deep pass. A lot of the fans up in Tallahassee are saying that's because of Johnson. Bowden, he says that's not the case. He says defenses have been playing them soft, laying back for the big pass, and they've gone underneath with high percentage passes like that one. Third down, eight for Florida State. Over the hands of Amp Lee. on the coverage. Jim, I suspect we're going to see a lot of the unexpected today, so we can expect that because it's Bobby Bowden. They set it up with a short pass. They've been doing it all year. Now they go with the same kind of pass and have him cut it up long. Wimberly in to punt for the second time. Punting into the wind. Wesley Carroll awaits. Wind helps knock it down but will come to rest inside the 25-yard line. 37 yards on the punt. 
Erickson 0 for 2 on that opening series. And again, last year, he missed the contest against Florida State. Had a broken knuckle on his index finger. Had to sit the game out. Gino Toretta, quarterback the Hurricanes at Tallahassee. On first down, McGuire making a nice move to go to the left side and out of bounds near the 35. It's a first down for Miami. A gain of 11. Steve McGuire is a third-year sophomore. He's from Brooklyn, New York. He broke all the Miami freshman rushing records last year. Where's Alonzo Highsmith's old number? He's 220 pounds. His business card says he bench presses over 350 and runs a 4-5, and that'll get you employment a lot of places. Well, you mentioned he wears Alonzo's jersey, and he really reminds me a lot of Alonzo Highsmith. Only a sophomore picking up the first for Miami. Getting the carry again. Breaking the tackle. Hit by Anthony Moss, but not until he moves the football across the 40. We have uh, Claude Jones down on the field. He was hurt coming into this contest, had turned an ankle in Tuesday's practice, had been on crutches during the week, and was a question mark coming into the contest. They were going to watch him in pregame warm-up, see how he did. So now I suspect Mario Cristobal, who's a versatile backup, will now move to that spot. They only go six deep. They're not deep at the offensive line spot. <laughs> to a jam-packed Orange Bowl, over 80,000 people here today to watch this battle between the Seminoles and the Canes. And just moments ago, uh, Claude Jones uh, was taken off the field. He had trouble before with his uh, ankle. It wasn't that. He was actually poked in the eye. So Mario Cristobal will replace him. And he actually has a brother playing in the offensive line as well. Interesting, when you look across the field, also, Jim Nance, you see a set of twins playing for Florida State. So today it's a brother story here at the Orange Bowl. Back to you guys. Ostazuski versus Cristobal. We'll watch that one. Little tag team match. <laughs> Second and one for the Hurricanes. Hill to the left. And freshman Kevin Williams split wide to the right. Double tight end formation for Craig Erickson. Working Steve McGuire near the first down yardage. Marvin Jones on the tackle. We're going to see McGuire with a lot of carries today, Tim. It looks like that. Well, it's part of the game plan. We mentioned early on that that's what Miami wants to do. Now, he came into the game with only 201 yards in the first three games. He's had a turf toe, consequently conditioning has been suspect, but they like the style, they like the way he runs, they want to work him in. And they say the more that he carries the ball, the stronger he gets and the better feel he gets for the game. Again, last week against Iowa, McGuire carried 20 times for 127 yards. Already has picked up about a quarter of that figure. Hurricanes are shy of the first third down approaching. Jim, the other thing we should look for, the Hurricanes feel the Seminoles are young and aggressive to the extent with a good play action or a good cutback by the running back, Florida State will fight hard for the fake or the overreaction, and they can gain ground coming the other way. We've already seen that early on here. Third down, less than a yard. McGuire has the first down for Miami. Let's check out that crystal ball versus Ostazuski matchup. There it is, 74 is Ostazuski. Mario did a pretty good job to call out a pancake, put him right down quickly, and the wrong ball here got the first down. Now, that's been one of the major points of emphasis for Miami, short yardage offense. They've been very weak on that in recent years. As a matter of fact, Florida State shut him down in short yardage last year. Double tight end formation on first down for Miami. Setting up a reverse to Randall Hill. He's got all kinds of room. Crystal ball in front. Tackled at the 32-yard line by Kirk Carruthers. 
A gain of 21. This is the overreaction we just talked about. You have to stay at home, protect your area no matter where the play goes. Florida State is young. See, there's no contain man out here. Now they're trying to come back, and Hill just takes it around with a blocker in front. And that blocker against Mario Cristobal, so he comes into the game and has an impact immediately. Randall Hill, fastest receiver on this team. First down, flooding the left side with three receivers. Erickson goes to the right to the tight end, Chudzinski. Terrell Buckley on the tackle after a gain of seven. Greg Erickson told us this week that the Miami offense now is really starting to click. Opening loss to BYU, then victories at California, and here at home last week against Iowa. Second down, McGuire. Picks up the first down at the 20. Number 30, Stephen McGuire. Craig Erickson had these thoughts about the Seminoles going in. Well-rounded football team that you really can't lack, slack in any aspect of the game. They've got great team speed. They, um, the team speed on defense, you can't make those throws that you just get in there on other teams because they're going to knock them away or pick them off. Faces additional pressure in this contest as Terrell Buckley has challenged him this week in an exchange with reporters. McGuire on the run. Look at him taking on Buckley and running him down to the 14. That guy's 220 pounds. We told you that. He's going against Buckley. Buckley's young and he's small. 5'10", 175 pounds. This drive, Miami has run the ball seven times. The Hurricanes have passed only once. So if they wanted to establish the run, they've done it. Three receivers to the left on second and five. Staying on the ground with McGuire. Why not? He's inside the 10 near another first. In fact, he's got the first down at the eight-yard line. Ostazuski on the tackle. First and goal for Miami. Leon Fowler is hurt for Florida State. just running over defenders on the last two carries. You see Corian Freeman, he has now entered the lineup. And Leon Fowler, free safety comes out. John Weish will also come into the Seminoles secondary. It, interesting, isn't it, how we talked yesterday to some of the coaches, and they felt outwardly that they could run the football against Florida State, basically, to be brutally honest, because they don't feel Florida State's defensive front is as strong as it has been in the past. Tenth play of the drive for Miami. On first and goal, we'll call it the seven. McGuire. A little pushing going on with Freeman and one of the linemen for Miami. That move by Corey and Freeman number 10. And Kurt Brothers. There is no lead off play. Six and a half. Second down goal for the Hurricanes. Hill, Thomas, and Carroll to the right. and has thrown seven touchdowns in the first three games. Maybe passing here. 
with the blitz, gets it away for Chudzinski. Pressure from Marvin Jones. Watch the tight end and then watch Buckley. We talked about Buckley being a great, really tough cornerback, aggressive. Here he just checks him. That's within the five-yard area. That's still a legal check. Buckley not only has returned two punts for touchdowns in the first four games, he's run back an interception for a score. He does things you can't coach. He's just very talented. He's got that natural ability. And while he's learning the defense, he can rely on his natural ability like we just saw. Third and goal for Miami. And the down clock runs out against the Canes. Delay of game, Miami, still third down. Back him up to the 12, third and goal from the 12. Erickson's completed one of his first four attempts. Complete. Anthony Moss got a hand on it, trying to get the quick slant to Lamar Thomas. And Anthony Moss was there. The drive fizzles inside the 10 for Miami. That's a big defensive stand for Florida State. Moss, 6'4", had two interceptions last year. He is experienced, does stay at home, and he almost had the INT there. Carlos Huerta, 29-yard field goal attempt. And he splits the sticks to open the scoring. Miami drives it all the way to the seven, and then is stopped. Of Miami. Miami on the board first three to nothing. Bobby Bowden's club now will go back on offense. And let me tell you, he spent a lot of time in the offseason with the San Francisco 49ers, and he's adopted a lot of their concepts. Although he's known for a lot of trick plays and open field, look at this. Compare Florida State with the 49ers. This is how similar they have become. Almost identical. All the way down, he's involving the fullbacks, the tailbacks, the tight ends. He's gone more to a horizontal offense than a vertical one, using the flats in high percentage. And it's been effective for Florida State. It's amazing how even those numbers are. The distribution. Uncanny. Now, Huerta will kick to Baker and Terrell. Drives it with the win. Terrell fields it at the goal line. Smashed at the 22. Jesse Armstead and friends. Yes, Casey Greer as well. Tonight, the American League Championship Series. Game one. We'll have it for you at 8 o'clock Eastern time. Dave Stewart. You're looking at him. He'll be pitching for the A's against Roger Clemens, and the weather up there is going to be beautiful as well. He's got his game face on already. <laughs> he does. Why not? Since he's gone to the A's, he's unbeaten when he goes up against Clemens. Tonight at 8 o'clock Eastern. First down Seminoles from the 22. Trailing mid-first, 3 nothing. Amply wrapped up for a no-gainer. Maurice Crumb. Inside backer here. Here's Crum. He's an active linebacker. Now, once the play starts, no false steps. Immediately comes up and gets into the gap. Tries to take on a blocker, but Haynes runs right by him, so nobody touches him. He comes up and makes the tackle untouched. Crum moving over to the middle linebacker spot that Bernard Clark had manned the previous years. Now with the Bengals. We'll call it second and 11. Passes thrown to Matt Fryer. And Fryer has a first down at the 34-yard line. Put some zip on that one, did young Brad Johnson. There is a flag down. Pass interference. Offensive. Saw 
on Georgia Tech score a moment ago, putting it on Maryland today. Georgia Tech, and Bobby Ross, he has really turned it around for the Yellow Jackets and face a November date against Virginia that could very well settle things in the ACC and present one challenge on Virginia's very light schedule the rest of the way. Florida State, that's also lost it down. It'll be third down. That game is in Charlottesville between Georgia Tech and Virginia. That could be the deciding factor in that game. Georgia Tech, very defensive-minded, as you know, with Bobby Ross, as you mentioned. He was my linebacker coach at Maryland. He knows defenses as well as any coach I've ever been around, and he's got Swilling. He's a good one. Swilling's as good a safety as there is in the country, I believe. Third down, 21. Amp Lee to the 15. Anthony Hamlet, Maurice Crum combine on the stop. And the punter, John Wimberly, will really feel the heat now. Wimberly had been dropped to second on the depth charts at one point this week behind Scotty McLaren, but got back the starting punting role. Under no pressure, Miami setting up a return. Midfield catch by Wesley Carroll. Down at the 43 inside Florida State territory. 36-yard punt, 8-yard return. Bowl in Miami. We knew going into the season this would be one of the big ones for the year that would help clear up the national championship puzzle. This game has been sold out for months. Jim Nance and Tim Brand along with John Dockery, Andrea Joyce and Mike Francesa back in our studios in New York. We'll call it the 44-yard line of Florida State. McGuire off right tackle. Shifting around is McGuire. He has room. McGuire to the 30. And run out of bounds at the 15. <laughs> 29 yards for Stephen McGuire. And finally forced out by Corey Fuller. What a cutback. Again, we tell you. Miami thinks they can be successful. Now watch Sterling Palmer, number 56. He's the outside contain man. He comes in on the right side. Right underneath they go. McGuire with a great read, super cutback, then just uses his speed as he gets back into the secondary. And Corey Fuller finally knocks him out of bounds. But they're going against the grain time and time again. McGuire already with 76 yards rushing in the first quarter. Now he'll take a breather. Is replaced here by Conley. And Leonard Conley... A long-time mainstay, it seems, at Miami. Gets it inside the 10. Marvin Jones on the tackle. Leonard Connolly is a senior from Tarpon Springs, Florida. <laughs> Second down three for the Hurricanes. Conley again. Conley gets free. Touchdown, Miami. point by Huerta, 10-0 Miami. 16th touchdown of his career, Leonard Conley. Plays hide and seek this time, watching pound for pound, the toughest offensive player on this club. That's what the coaches say. Yardage-wise, he's in the top 10 of Miami's all-time rushers. Got locked in behind the big lineman. He got lost in there, played hide and seek, burst outside, and it's wide open. Watch this, you move the nose tackle, good things happen. Here we go right here. Now he comes up, gets lost in there, plays hide and seek, and will bounce outside. They think they've got him. Watch this. Move him out of the way, the nose tackle's forced outside, comes under him and pops it out. Boy, he is something, isn't he? 5'9", 170 pounds. 
Coaches talk about Conley having good feet, agile, quick feet. One of the reasons for that is when he was a little kid, he played a lot of soccer. He says that helped him be aggressive with his feet, gave him those quick feet. In the first quarter, there's a hurricane blowing. But they're doing it on the ground, not with Air Erickson. They haven't had to. Boy, they should go up and shake Darren Handy's hand, the center. He just moved the nose guard right out of there. 324 left in the first quarter. 10-0 Hurricanes. Terrell from the four. Oh, he swarmed under. Did not make it to the 20. Charles Farms gets him first. Darren Krein finished him off. Now you're not seeing the extra animated celebrations at Miami. Not after a mandate that was given out last week by coach Dennis Erickson. He told his team to cool it a little bit once they score. Wants his guys to act like they've been in the end zone before. Brad Johnson to throw on first down. Man is wide open in the flat. It's Dossie. Dossie spinning around for the first at the 30-yard line. Hurley Brown's on him along with Roland Smith. And let's check in with John Dockery. Doc? You know, Jim, one of the things that Florida State will have to deal with is the environment. It's getting hostile. There's 80,000 folks here. And I'll never forget last year with Notre Dame when they came here to the Orange Bowl, walking off the field with Lou Holtz and him looking up and just feeling that oppressively hostile environment and shaking his head. Well, that's some of what Bobby Bowden and the Seminoles and Brad Johnson have to deal with right now, though the atmosphere isn't quite as charged. Whistles. By the way, that last reception by Dossie. 26 games in a row now. He's caught at least one pass. Lawrence Dossie. Continuing with problems, I guess, with the uh, new scoreboard. Going after his 200th win today, Bobby Bowden. You know, it's more than just a number. It's a measuring mark, a way to evaluate long-term success of your coaching career. It's a valuable indicator. And I'll tell you what, he may not be in a class of his own, but where he is, it doesn't take long to call roll. Not many names up there. First and 10. Johnson fires it and almost intercepted. Right in the hands of Robert Bailey. Right into coverage. Johnson gets away with one here. Miami shows a zone. Everybody gets back into their hook areas. Now watch this. Here comes, actually it's a combination defense. Bailey was in man. They had a deep zone and man underneath. They say he doesn't like man, Bailey. They said as soon as they call man in the huddle, he starts Florida backpedaling. State, still first down. A holding penalty as well, so they'll take the holding penalty. Shannon Baker had fallen down his intended target. Look at Stanford. Given Notre Dame fits in the third quarter at South Bend. Last year, the Cardinal threw 68 passes against the Irish. That game was played at Stanford. Notre Dame prevailed by 10. We were talking about that one this week. We thought Stanford might give them a contest. Sure have been in enough close ones. Another penalty against the Seminoles. Dead ball. False start. Florida State. Still first down. By the way, in two weeks, Miami will be in South Bend to take on Notre Dame. It's the final game in that series. And the winner of that contest has won the national championship the last three years. That's in two weeks. Still first down, first and 25. With pressure, jump past to Lee, and he is hammered by Armstead. What a hit by Jesse Armstead. And let's check out with the Irish situation, Andrea Joyce, take it away.
Well, Jim, you just gave the score, and here's how it happened. Second drive in the third quarter, Stanford's Tommy Vardell scores his second touchdown of the day, a one-yard run, and it's a two-point game. Let's go back to Miami. All right, we'll look forward to updates on that contest. As well as all the scores and highlights at halftime from Andrea and Mike Francesa. Second down, 30. Pass incomplete. Intended for Dave Roberts, the backup tight end. Johnson's throwing into a pretty stiff breeze. That ball was well thrown, though. Roberts should have had it. Miami sent the uh, punting, punt return team out onto the field, thinking it was fourth down. The defense had cleared the field, and they had to turn around and come back. Jim, the defense for Miami has been very vulnerable to this point. It's taken a lot of heat. All the talk is about the loss of Cortez Kennedy and Bernard Clark to graduation. Russell Maryland's been banged up. But right now, they're showing a lot of different looks to Johnson. Third down, they won't even challenge a possible interception. And they run it with Amp Lee, and it'll be fourth and 27. John Dockery, take it away. You know, Jim Nance, some extra pressure on the punt of John Wimbley because before the game, Bobby Saladin said, you are my kicker as long as you kick well. So it's each punt decides whether he'll stay in there or else Scotty McLaren. The problem, Bowden says, is inconsistency like that one. Well, there it is. He gets a favorable bounce, however. I thought into the wind, Wimberly had been doing a good job here in the first quarter up until that one. But he gets away with a 42-yard measurement. And at the 45 of Miami, it's where the Hurricanes offense will take the field again. 1-11 left in the first quarter, already 10-0. Does this have the makings of two years ago? Florida State and Miami opened the season. On September the 3rd of 88, Florida State was the preseason number one team and got blown out here 31-0. Erickson now, he's been setting him up for a pass intended for Randall Hill. He just kind of stopped on that one. They were hoping the play action would hold the linebackers a little bit better, but once Hill got in the secondary, he saw the linebackers were still there, got his head on the swivel, actually pulled up short, got those alligator arms thinking he was going to get hit. <laughs> Here's a new receiver at the bottom of your screen for Miami. He's going to be a big-time player, folks. Horace Copeland, number 88. Second down, 10. Leonard Conley is still in the game. He picks up three. Copeland is a sophomore from Orlando, Florida. And they've been inserting him more and more every week. We picked him out quickly at practice. He just seemed to stand out. He's got one of those bodies that just looks like a high-tech wide receiver. In high school, he was a high jumper. High jump seven feet. Jim, early on, Miami wants to show different offensive sets, see how Florida State reacts defensively. Usually takes the club three series to fully evaluate the entire defensive package, make the adjustments, and then go to work on weaknesses. And they've shown a lot of different things already. They based it around the run. Now, McGuire was in early, and he had that turf toe. Remember, the coaches told us they were concerned about his conditioning. So now they put in Conley, and they just keep right on going. Interesting. Dennis Erickson calls a timeout facing third and seven. We'll be right back. Bobby Bowden is warming up the second-string quarterback, Casey Weldon. Weldon and Johnson were even going into the spring for the starting role, taking over for the graduated Peter Tom Willis. And they were very close. Johnson got the nod. Florida State's only generated 28 total yards so far, even though Johnson's three for six. But this is a team that averages 39 points a game, Florida State. They really haven't moved it at all. Call it third and eight for the Hurricanes, up by 10. Erickson with pressure gets it to Randy Bethel, the tight end, and a first down for the Hurricanes inside of the 40. Terrell Buckley on the tackle, a 15-yard gain, second completion of the contest for 
Craig Erickson. Watch Erickson under pressure now. 94, McIntosh comes in, gets some pressure on him. Watch Erickson, just hangs, hangs, looks at his receiver. Backs up and throws it, and he puts it right there for Randy Bethel, the tight end, who came underneath the coverage. 17 seconds left in the first quarter, and another momentary timeout called by one of the officials. Continues to check out the scoreboard clock. Florida State will be idle next week, and then on October 20th, in fact, their next game is against Auburn at Auburn. So this is a very tumultuous two-game stretch for Florida State. First and 10, Miami. Conley on the carry. This time, a no game. As Ostazuski makes the tackle. That'll run out time in the first quarter. Dominated by the Hurricanes. The score is Miami 10, Florida State nothing, and we'll return to the Orange Bowl after this message and a word from your local station. Territory yet, and if you look at the first line, 135 total yards for Miami and only 28 for Florida State. 113 of those came on the ground, the running game. So, so far, it's just been a pretty good licking by Miami. It's been all Hurricanes to this point. Miami, as we start the second quarter, is in Florida State territory at the 39-yard line. The Seminoles in the first quarter did not get the football into Miami's side of the field. Keep in mind now, for this quarter, Miami will be playing into the wind, and Florida State will have the breezes at their back. Screen pass to McGuire, tackled for a loss. A good play. Good hit put on by Howard Dinkins. Junior from Jacksonville. That's an outstanding play. They call him the bandit. He stays on the drop-end side, away from the tight end. He's in his own coverage, gets back. Here's the pressure on Erickson, who looks and tries to set up the screen. Dinkins was just sitting out there wa wait, Watch him now. Break down, come in, and make the hit. That's a big-time play from a junior. 6'2", 220-pounder. They call him the bandit. defensive backs in on third and 14. So Dinkins is out. Moss running down Erickson, who throws it across the field, and the ball is dropped. Dropped by Leonard Conley. There is a penalty flag on the field. Roughing the passer against Florida State. Todrick McIntosh and Anthony Moss come in on Erickson. No question about it. The ball was gone. He hit him right in the chest plate. That is a huge penalty. That could turn out to be a seven-point penalty for Miami. They would have had to have punted. That defender is supposed to have two steps to stop. That's, what I think, what Bobby's question. He said he was right on him. He couldn't pull back. He was going after the guy, and he was in, already starting to extend himself to get into his chest plate. Tim, I don't think he had two steps. I think he was right in Erickson's face already. It was close. I don't know. I, I, I thought the ball was gone long enough where he could have pulled up or at least gone to the side. First and ten for the Hurricanes after that major penalty. Conley now down the sidelines and out of bounds inside the 20. Leonard Conley and McGuire mixing it up on the ground for Miami. Let's mix it up now with Andrea Joyce in New York. Guys, third quarter, Notre Dame has found some breathing room. Rick Meyer spearheaded this Irish drive. Rodney Culver took it in from the one. Meyer has passed for two touchdowns and run for another today. And Notre Dame is up by nine. Let's go back to Jim Nance. Yes, thank you, Andrea. Still early in that game, and Stanford with 22 showing he could put, put points on the board against the Irish. Second and two from the 18. McGuire easily with the first. 
and inside the 10, first and goal for Miami. Hold on, there's a flag down. Flag at the line of scrimmage. Illegal motion, Miami. Take away the first down. Will make it second and seven. Illegal motion, Miami. Replay second down. Have you called Carruthers or Jones this afternoon? Two linebackers that Florida State says are two of the best in the country. And they haven't been involved that much yet. Jones has been in on just a couple of plays, that's all. And these are two very active guys. I mean, just look what Marvin Jones did last week, Tim. 21 tackles against Virginia Tech, but that was Virginia Tech. And Carruthers, he came into this game last year, had 16 tackles, two interceptions, caused a fumble, recovered one. Second and seven. Flooding the right side with the three receivers. And running it up the middle with McGuire, sidestepping a defender and picking up the first. At the 15-yard line. McGuire's on his way to going over 100 here in the first half. He has 84 already on 11 carries. Talk about power football. Watch this right here. This is power football. Just take him and go out. Power football. Double team him. Move him out. Open the hole. Give him a place to go. Now he's into the secondary. Now you got to have pursuit. Everybody's got to run to the football. But that's great offensive line play by Miami. First and 10, Conley returns. Conley with the carry. Inside the 10, he darts to the eight. There's Marvin Jones on the tackle, but not until he picks up seven. Again, it's Sullivan, Cristobal, Handy, Cristobal, and Searcy. Watch the offensive line. Here's Carruthers, 45. He's the guy that they say is the best linebacker in the country, if you listen to Florida State. Here's one block, tries to roll off that, doesn't wrap his arms. Conley keeps going, picks up another four yards. Second and three at the eight-yard line. We'll call it second and two. McGuire is back in there. They're alternating Conley and McGuire. Look at this. McGuire bulldozing inside of the five and a first down. Bowden going into this season was concerned about losing two starters on his defensive line. Miami is just running it right down their throats. Don't even have to analyze it. It's obvious. That's power football at its best. I think it was a setup. Miami boosted up Florida State saying we're not as strong as they are and they come out and they're just blowing them off the football. Very low key coming in. First and goal, McGuire. Stood up at the one by Marvin Jones. 11.35 left in the first half. It's 10-0 Miami, and the Canes about to go in again. Let's give Florida State its due, though. That was a big-time play by Jones. He's just a freshman at linebacker. That time he stepped up in a hole. He wants to be the center of attention. Very confident guy. Just tucked his tail, skied his eyes, and put his helmet right under the chin of the ball carrier. Second and goal. Conley is the lone back. Two tight ends. Bethel and Chudzinski. Conley, touchdown Miami. Good again. 17 nothing Miami. Forget finesse. Finesse is not even a part of this. This is power football. Slobber knocker hits. You know, that's not scoop blocking or kickouts. That's straight ahead. 
I'm coming at you straight ahead. No fair dodging. If you can stop me, you don't have a touchdown, but they take it right at him. Tell him where it's going. Another touchdown for the Canes. You gotta love those slobber knocker hits. That first encounter. Where does kick? Bouncing around and out of bounds at the one. So see the flag coming out. And while we have a moment, let's uh, check in again with Andrea in New York. Andrea. Jim, once again, the Irish are being challenged this afternoon. Late in the third quarter, Tommy Vardell scored his third touchdown of the day, his 10th of the season, and the Cardinal has pulled it within two. Fourth quarter just underway. Let's go back to Jim Nance. Can you believe Notre Dame has allowed 29 points in the third quarter against Stanford, a team coming in at 1-3 and three on the year? Ironically, we talked about that in the car coming into the yes. Orange Bowl today. Stanford, it's a strong football team. Lost a couple of close ones early on. Remember watching them play against Colorado and how impressed we were with Barry Milburn. That's the night the uh, tornado was coming after us. Yes, in Detroit. <laughs> in Detroit. Had to evacuate the building. Well, that was a tornado that night. Here the story is about a hurricane. Miami, to be exact. Baker at the 9. Baker tackled at the 25. Watch out now. Burley Brown in on the tackle. Flag down, it's gonna be against Miami. I suspect a personal foul after all that activity. That or unsportsmanlike conduct. Dead ball, personal foul, Miami, 15 yard penalty, first down Florida State. So they get the big step off, and uh, let's check in now with uh, John Dockery again. John? You know, Jim, temperatures on the field running fairly hot. You see the thermometer about 94 degrees, maybe a little hotter on the field. You see oxygen just behind me there, and that's what Stephen McGuire, the uh, sophomore running back he's standing behind me, was taking moments ago. So the heat is a factor. He's been stretching. Some of the other teams have been alternating players, especially at linebacker, and I think we'll see a lot more of that as it is fairly hot down here. Back to you guys. Is that Doc or Don Johnson? <laughs> yeah, he's got that whole Miami Vice thing going on. He does. That's that the sidelines. Case. Yes. New quarterback. Casey Weldon has replaced Brad Johnson. And he'll come out firing. Complete to Paul Moore. Moore is hit by Roland Smith after a six-yard gain. And what does Casey Weldon bring to the Seminoles, Tim? He's got the experience. That's one thing. He's a very good friend of Johnson's. He was the number two guy to Peter Tom Willis. He stepped up, thought he would have the job, and then Johnson switched over from basketball, and they put him in the number one spot after a great spring. But Bobby Bowden thinks that this guy is just as good as Brad Johnson, can step in. He's very composed. He'll go deep a little more often than Brad Johnson, they say. Second and four. Setting up a reverse, yes. Dawson to the short side of the field, and he is tackled by the face mask. A rather obvious infraction. You know, I didn't think the face mask was that obvious, but the flag going down indicated that that's what they were gonna call. Now let's talk about it and come up and tell you that's what it was, but it looked like he got the jersey. I don't know, I saw his head. Miami, five-yard penalty, replay second down. It's a moot point. There is no replay in college football. Scared me, though. I saw his head snap around. There it is. You're right. No question. And it was Shane Curry drafted by the face guard. And now Florida State is inside Miami territory for the first time in this game. Keep in mind, Florida State was down 21-3 against Virginia Tech just a week ago. Came back strongly. Biggest comeback in the history of Bobby Bowden's career at Florida State. Down 18, they won that one. Now they're down 17. First down from the 49. Weldon to the right side. Oh, almost a great catch for the tight end, Reggie Johnson. There was double coverage over there. Hurley Brown and Darren Smith. 
That's a dangerous pass for any quarterback. As soon as he releases, he'll hold his breath, see where the free safety is, because he's usually hanging back there. And when you throw across the field to an out pattern that way, that safety can usually get over. Hometown boy, Casey Weldon. Hometown for Florida State. Grew up in Tallahassee. Now manning the way. That quarterback, second and 10. That one should have been caught. Dropped by Paul Moore. Darren Smith breathing down his back. Sets up third and 10 for the Seminoles. Moore alternating with Edgar Bennett at fullback. And uh, Moore is from right here in Miami. Usually on third down and long, you look for Lawrence Dossie. Third and short, it's Edgar, Edgar Bennett. Third and a full 10 for Florida State. Inside of 10 minutes to go second quarter, trailing 17-0. Weldon with all kinds of time, looking for Shannon Baker. Bailey on the one-on-one -on -one coverage, right with Baker. Anytime you watch Florida State, you got to look out for the wizardry, the trickery of Bobby Bowden. John Wimberly to punt. Fair catch called and bounces into the end zone. No breaks to this point for Florida State. That was a 49 yard punt for Wimberly. Miami will bring it out to the 20 in full command at this point in the first half. To this point for Miami, but we told you they've cut down on some of their emotions, and we talked to Wesley Carroll about that. I think we can we can play pretty much up tempo, you know, without all the celebration. But you know, some people, you know, when I go back home, people are like, "Hey, man, I wish I could do the type of stuff that y'all do out there," you know, Ex you know, celebrate and enjoy the little moment that the, the big play you just had, and you know, try to savor the moment. You know, but I don't think it's, it's just cutting out all the, the nastiness. You know, we can celebrate, give each other high fives and everything, but we can't do it, go out and be a center of attraction or run to the middle of the field and do a little routine or anything. Well, I think the emotion is obviously still there, but celebrations are scaled down a bit. It all stemmed from their play out at California where they went over the edge, said Dennis Erickson, and he said anyone who challenges this, any player who pushes the limit, goes too far, sits down either the rest of that game or the entire next game. Trying to change the image for the Hurricanes. On first and 10, Conley. Just back to the line of scrimmage. Ostazuski and Sterling Palmer on the tackle. Sterling Palmer has checked in on the defense for Bobby Bowden. He's a freshman from Fort Lauderdale. Jim, we were talking earlier in the game about it takes several drives for the coaches to see what the defense is doing, and then they adjust. The first drives are usually emotional for the players, educational for the coaches. Miami's gone punt, field goal, touchdown, and touchdown, so it really has worked. Play action fake, and Erickson throwing long in the direction of no Hurricane player at all. Errol McCorvey trying to run it down for an INT. Erickson to this point, three for 10 for 19 yards. But his passing has not been needed. He's a very cerebral quarterback, makes very few mistakes, decisions are quick and sound, understands defenses, has the God-given talent to translate those assets into productivity. And today it's just meant handing the ball off to McGuire and Conley. I thought this was a real swing game for Erickson coming in today for his Heisman candidacy. Second and 10. Conley out in motion. Chudzinski with a player all over him. Got to throw the flag on that one. And that's Terrell Buckley. Buckley will be called for interference. The big play man, Terrell Buckley. Defensive pass interference. Florida State is less than 15 yards with the spot foul, but it's the first down. 
And watch Buckley just holding on. He gave us yesterday in a very Dion-like rap going into the game a bunch of uh, verbiage about Craig Erickson being just an average quarterback at best. And that has been making the rounds here in Miami. And they've been going right at Buckley. He's a sophomore, but that was a freshman mistake. Alex Johnson on the carry for no gain. And again, we got another update. This time it's about the Buffs. And let's rejoin Andrea Joyce. Jim, in Columbia, Missouri, late in the second quarter, number 12 Colorado was struggling without Darian Hagan, but the bus got a boost with a 69-yard touchdown run from Mike Pritchard to tie it up. Colorado has the ball back on a fumble recovery. Now let's go back to Miami. Mm. Well, Missouri last week really put one on Arizona State. Staying with Colorado. Second down, 10. Randy Bethel makes the grab, but it's short of the first. Set up third and four. You're saying that Buckley is a sophomore, but that was a freshman mistake. You were talking about both his comments during the week and the interference call. I think they're both freshman mistakes. You're right. Not only the talk, but he was riding the guy. Now, here comes the pressure up the middle. Here's Marvin Jones. This, he, this player is a freshman. He puts the pressure on him. It was a well-designed play in that they had three receivers to the right of the screen. Those guys all went deep, and then they brought the tight end, Bethel, 93, there underneath. Just wasn't enough for the first, but it was well-designed. Daryl Spencer has come in as a receiver. He's in a slot left. On third down for Miami. Ball is caught by Chudzinski for the first. Back into Florida State territory. A gain of 10. Old reliable, Rob Chudzinski. How about Clemson today just clobbering Georgia? That final. You talked about Virginia earlier in the broadcast. Virginia caught Clemson at a great time. New coach, second team, and they got the win. That, too, was in Charlottesville. But Clemson's getting stronger week by week. First and 10 on the delay to give to Conley. Trying to slash free, but does not get away from Kirk Carruthers. There he is. How about that? Hmm. Two yards for Florida State, five for Miami. Miami's had twice as many plays. And we're at six minutes, 30 seconds left in the second quarter. 17-0 Hurricanes. Well, you can keep the ball twice as long when you get five yards of carry. You get a first down yeah. every two plays. <laughs> Second down, 11. Conley with a blocker in front. He's cleared the way. Conley may take it the rest. Cutting back to the middle. He gets down to the nine. But a flag is down. John Weiss ran him down after a 41-yard gain. I thought Conley might break it the entire distance. You have to wonder where the flood control is for the Florida State defense. Take a look at Sullivan. Sullivan is a tackle when you watch this play again because he opens this thing wide open. That was some block. Flipping on Miami during the run. Be penalized 15 yards from the spot. It will still be a first down. They say the spot of the penalty was at the 14, so the ball's now at the 29 with a first down. Okay, watch this. Here is Sullivan now. Sullivan is over here, and he, watch this now. He'll come all the way over, and he'll throw the block that clears this out. He's 272 pounds. He's got good feet. He works. He moves. He's an All-American candidate, and look at that. That's clearing out the secondary for Conley, the ball carrier. But where's force control? There is no contain man over there. Finally, when you get downfield, Conley just says, hey, let me get a blocker in front of me. So he stops, waits for help inside, then cuts it back to the middle. Erickson up top to Spencer at the 10. Spencer down to the five-yard line. A gain of 24. First and goal for the Hurricanes. 
linebacker in sight. C-55 way up there. That's Jones. He had penetrated. He was looking at Connolly. Now here comes the safety. Fowler's got to come all the way over, but by then, you're already downfield about 14, 15 yards. Connolly in the backfield. Connolly with the fake. Erickson will throw too high. Chudzinski in the area. Along with Lamar Thomas. I was talking to Lamar Thomas before the ball game. Said he feels good. I looked down. I saw this little bracelet around his ankle. I said, Lamar, what is that? He says, I go out and I speak to a lot of elementary schools. And one of the little girls there gave me this friendship bracelet. So I wear it. And he says, I put it on in summer ball, haven't taken it off yet. It's a great reminder for me to stay on the straight and narrow. Nice story. Second down and goal. McGuire on a wing. Erickson with pressure. Oh, incomplete. Intended for Randy Bethel. And Bryce Abbott put a hit on him. enough pressure on Erickson where I thought they may knock the football loose. He almost still pulls this thing off. Here comes Abbott. Abbott's got the pressure. Backside is Carruthers, 45. They hit him. He's hit front and back, still throws the pass and almost makes it happen. He comes from an athletic family. His dad played for a couple of years at Northwestern. His granddad, All-American at Pitt. Timeout called by Miami as they approach the line of scrimmage. That's their second timeout called in this half, leaving them with one. We have five minutes before the half. And Miami about to go up even more. Will it be a touchdown or a field goal? Miami takes on back end. Here we go, doubles left, motion left. Nine and three extra. All right, that's great. All right. Hey, hey, you see. Get in again, get in again. Come here. Erickson to Erickson. And the two of them collaborating on a play here on third and goal from the five. Already leading 17, nothing over the second ranked team in the country. I'll tell you what, if I was Mr. Buckley, I'd strap it on right now. <laughs> McGuire shifts out in motion. Erickson, four step back pedal, flag down, incompletion. And a second flag comes down in the end zone. We're going to call this one over Corby. A flag at the line of scrimmage and then a flag thrown after the incompletion. second flag was against McCorby, so it was a dead ball before it ever got to his interference, so that is negated. Back up! So they'll back up the Canes to the 10. Third and goal from there. Bobby Bowden has to be feeling quite anxious about this first half. In this play. Hill to the right, Thomas to the left, McGuire in the backfield. And now Carroll on a wing to the right. Throwing into the corner. Thomas chases it down. Touchdown, Miami. That was beautiful.
Huerta is now 110 for 110 in his career, point afters at Miami. Craig Erickson saw Buckley roll up and press on the outside. Man-for-man -man coverage. He called an audible. Checked off at the line. Check with me. Watch this now. It's just a timing pattern, and he's going to work on Buckley. And what happens? Thomas just takes Buckley to school. Here's the check off. He sees man coverage. Buckley's up pressing hard. Timing pattern. Put it up. Let him run under it. Buckley never even sees the ball coming. Look, he's still not looking back. Thomas just has to run under it. Well designed, well played. Great call by Erickson. Buckley's getting an education this afternoon. That was, that was not what you would call an average play. How about Tom? Or an average pass. How about Thomas? Thomas shows up at the Tuesday press conference wearing orange University of Florida sweatpants. People thought he was going to the wrong game. Came to the right play that time. You think Lamar's excited? Baker from the seven. Has a wedge in front. Tackled at the 30. Now, we've mentioned there were some words exchanged this week about Craig Erickson's playing ability from Florida State. Here they are. Well, he's the average quarterback to me. You know, I, they say he's a Heisman candidate. I don't see it. You know, he, he has to prove it to me. You average know, I, quarterback? Average. You know, he overthrows, underthrows his receivers. And, you know, if he just pick on me, I, I would love that. I wonder if you love this one. <laughs> he's just... picking on you. They're saying right at you, Mr. Buckley. Johnson has returned at quarterback for Florida State. Pass, nice grab. Out to the 45-yard line, Edgar Bennett. That's a gain of 16. One of the better plays in this game for Florida State offensively. You know, Jim, we don't want to come down hard on Drill Buckley. He's a tremendous talent. He's going to be an all-world player. And he's going to be in the pros one day. He'll be in the National Football League. He's just learning now. He's got to learn to hold his tongue, watch what he says, and when you get out there, just be very careful with what you do. And he has been nursing a sore ankle this week. Stacked up Florida State, Smith and Michael Barrow Double teaming Lee on the run. Duke comes from behind to edge Army today, and Penn State on its way to its second straight win after opening with two losses. Second down eight. Johnson throwing it out of bounds, intended for Matt Fryer. You might be wondering, why did we see Weldon for one series? This is something that Bobby Bowden had also utilized against Tulane earlier this year, bringing Weldon in for the first series of the second quarter, and Johnson's back in. But the results have been the same for Florida State, right on down the line, punt, 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 and punt. Third and eight, Roberts with the catch. Trying to drive for the first. He's very close. Now, they're going to be probably measuring for this one. It's at the Miami 44-yard line and down 24-0. Tim, I've got to think the old gambler and Bobby Bowden knows he has to go for it here. Yeah, I don't think there's any question in his mind what he wants to do. 328 left in the second quarter. See how Bennett just cleared things out for the tight end that last time. Now you've got to depend on power football, but this is also a time where you might look deep if you're bowing, but I think you just got to power it and try to get the first. Shane Curry jumped across for Miami, and he knows it. That's the easy way to get it. <laughs> I'm telling you. That'll get him the five yards. 
dead ball, offside, Miami. I'll give Florida State a first down. Notre Dame and Stanford into the fourth quarter, a two-point lead for the number one team in America. And Auburn, it's not easy for Auburn today either against Louisiana Tech. Oklahoma dead even at the half. Nebraska, you could say that's a surprise. Kansas State within eight at that point of the game. First down throw. Look out over the head of Matt Fryer. Brad Johnson has been a starter on the basketball team at Florida State, finally decided to give up the hoop so he could concentrate on being the number one quarterback for the Seminoles. Had his first ever full spring practice with the Seminoles and won the job. Here's a nice play, complete to Dossie, down to the 20-yard line and a Florida State first down, a gain of 19. And they are threatening for the first time today. Hurley Brown on the stop, along with Michael Barrow. This is the kind of play that Miami was susceptible to early in the year. Actually, all the way up, they've been given 310 yards a game passing, and most of it's been underneath stuff. So here comes Florida State now. They use Roberts as the tight end to clear out and bring Dossie underneath for the big game. First down pitch, Amp Lee. And they're just going nowhere on the ground. Eric Miller makes the tackle. Eric Miller and that opening loss to BYU put a zinger on Ty Detmer. And you might recall Detmer had to have six stitches to sew up his chin. That was after the hit put on by Miller. Miller himself is wearing a shoulder harness. He's got a banged up shoulder. Florida State with only 19 yards rushing. Second down play through the hands of Roberts, who would have scored. The Orange Bowl in Miami. Jim Nance and Tim Brandt. John Dockery is down on the sidelines for us. Miami, the ninth-ranked team in the country manhandling Florida State to this point. Third and nine. Dossie. Touchdown, Florida State. State faithful saying it's about time. One minute, 40 seconds left in the second quarter and a timeout called by the Seminoles. Lawrence Dossie with his 15th career touchdown. A man who loves to go across the middle. Jim, it's the same play they ran to the right side earlier in the drive where they used the tight end Roberts to clear it out and then they bring Dossie underneath. Dossie very versatile. You saw him break some tackles there. It says he hates to hate this to be tackled, likes to take the punishment to the tackler. Every coach you talk to says that he's the toughest guy on the team as far as a receiver. <laughs> Blue collar type guy. I like what he said yesterday. He said, I'm a linebacker playing wide receiver. He likes that. Played five different positions in high school, was still the top receiver in the state of Alabama. Him now great receiver knows a small percentage of the time that you just outrun a defender with speed you have to be smart deceptive work free get there and once you get there you've got to get down low and put the bang on them now let me tell you what this timeout's about Bobby Bowden's going to go for two down 24 6 figures three touchdowns and three two-point plays with time up I 
think that's a good idea at this point. Down 24-6. 24-8 gives you within 16. Two possible scores away from a tie. I think he's also accurate when he says, we got to get it, baby. Got to get it. Florida State one for one on two-point conversions this year. blitz the ball was tipped otherwise Bennett was open watch coming right up the middle Maurice Crum gets a hand on it keep in mind Johnson is six foot six here comes Crum gets up knocks it down Bennett number 22 see him back there in the back of your picture he was wide open for the two-point conversion it would have been good Crum breaks it up Maurice Crum from Tampa, from the same neighborhood as Dwight Gooden, was a great baseball player himself. Maurice Crum has played, in fact, here for the University of Miami. But that's timing, Jim. That was perfect timing on his part, showing the athleticism, because, again, Johnson's 6'6". Crum is only six feet, barely. Just timed it perfectly, and while Johnson was throwing down, trying to get it out there to Bennett, he just timed it and blocked it. Nation's longest winning streak, Division 1A win streak, in big jeopardy. And Stanford has taken the lead on the number one team in America in the fourth at South Bend. It's Stanford leading. And here the second ranked team is also in all kinds of heat and trouble. score holds and Notre Dame loses Florida State loses Auburn will still be unbeaten but Auburn's having a tough go of it would it be some people searching for a new number one you know Michigan's third in the AP ranking even with the loss Virginia's unbeaten at four and you got Auburn with the tie and Auburn struggling today as well with Louisiana Tech it's now time to present this week's Toyota Leadership Award to the team players who have been singled out by their school's coaching and faculty staff for outstanding performance in the areas of team contributions, academics, and citizenship. Today's winner is Dave Roberts from Florida State. He graduated in three years, is one semester away from his master's degree in communications. And for Miami, Russell Maryland. He also has graduated pursuing a postgraduate degree in psychology. Very active volunteer in the Special Olympics. Congratulations to both of these fine gentlemen. Toyota donates a check in the amount of $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund. First down carry by Connolly. Nice spin move. And a gain of 15. Flag down on the field. One thing about that Notre Dame score, Rick Myers already brought the Irish from behind in the fourth quarter twice in his young career. You know what I can't understand while you were talking about the Toyota folks, they announced that score here in the stadium and they all cheer. Erickson to Randy Bethel, his third catch of the day. That's a good point, Tim. You would think that the Miami folks would want to keep them unbeaten until they get out there October 20th and those then uh, let Miami be the one to knock them off. All right, gives you a heck of a lot more credibility to beat number one. We'll have updates at halftime with Andrea and Mike. But Miami's threatening again. In the meantime, a first down into Florida State territory. <laughs> Bethel slow getting up. Tony LaRusso will be also interviewed at halftime back at Studio 45. Now, 52 seconds left in the second quarter. Conley. Conley fumbled at the tail end of that. They're going to say he was down at the 36-yard line. No, they're going to rule it a recovery by Florida State. Here it is again, the strip. Just hits the ball. Corey Fuller, 28. Just pulls it right out. 
Oh, he just hung on to that thing and finally got it out, pulled it away very quickly. Keith Jones recovers for Florida State. He's been seeing some action today. Put on a big hit earlier in this half. Two timeouts for the Knowles. 41 seconds and the win at their back. Edgar Bennett. Nice move to shake free. And a first down as he races to the sidelines to stop the clock. Smart play by Bennett. So that's three big pass plays now that they've worked. Two to Dossie, now that one to Bennett. So now they've got the Miami defense on its heels. I'd look to Dossie right now and also work for something a little bit special. Watch something that could come out of uh, his back pocket right there. His back pocket and his bag full of tricks. First and 10, 33 seconds left. Setting up screen, look out. Caught by Bennett, I thought it might be picked off. Just a nominal gain up to the 50. Shane Curry for a moment looked like he might pick that one off. That play took 10 seconds, so there are 23 seconds left. Florida State with two timeouts. Johnson with pressure gets it away. Incomplete. They'll say Baker did not get a foot down. Made a very athletic play to come down with the football, but they said it was out. Oh. I think his big toe was in. <laughs> by a toenail. So it's third down with 16 seconds remaining. Caught and then dropped. Is it a completion and a fumble? They're going to say he was down. No. Miami. Caught by Johnson and then jarred loose. Darrell Williams on the recovery. Michael Barrow helped put the blow on Johnson. Well, the back judge came up and marked it like it was going to be Florida State's ball, like he was down. There's no question the ball popped out. Finally, another official, the side judge, or the back judge, rather, told the side judge, hey, that ball popped out. It's Miami's. Watch this. There's the catch. Does he have possession? Yes, his feet are down. Well, I don't know. The ball was on his hip. I don't think he really ever had it full control. Just before the half. Conley. Conley still going at the 30. Time has run out. As he is bumped out at the 20. However, there is a flag down. And the half cannot end on a defensive penalty. 43 yards. Conley carried the football. assess the penalty now and that is of course critical it was a dead ball penalty after he was down after he was down the play it ended the half it ended dead ball it'll be assessed on the opening kickoff and how about this Notre, Notre Dame, Dame has lost Stanford has shocked Notre Dame we'll have details coming up from New York with Andrea and Mike after this message and a word from your local station unbelievable Bowl. We're about to get set for the third quarter with Miami leading over the second-ranked team in the nation 24-6. An ever-changing day it has been in college football. 
in a very dominating first half for the Hurricanes. Jim Nance along with Tim Brandt. Tim, what about that first half performance by the Hurricanes? I think the best word to describe it was dominating. You just used it. You take the Crystal Ball brothers, you put them on both sides of Handy, Searcy and Sullivan outside, and the offensive line has just dominated Florida State. They've gone now 335 yards total offense. 249 of those have been on the ground. So you, you now have uh, McGuire, who has 89 yards rushing. Conley comes in. He goes over 138 with that last run, and so they've been very effective with the run. Leonard Conley moved into fifth place on the all-time rushing list at Miami, passing Chuck Foreman with that run right before the half. We'll return to the Orange Bowl after this message and a word from your local station. CBS Sports coverage of today's CFA game is sponsored by Toyota's quality line of cars and trucks. Toyota, I love what you do for me. United Airlines. Serving over 200 cities in the U.S. and around the world. Come fly the friendly skies. And by the U.S. Army, where you get an edge on life. Be all you can be. Miami will kick from midfield to start the second half. They've assessed that dead ball penalty at the end of the first half right here. The 15 yards and Huerta will boot from the 50. on a knee and we'll bring it out to the 20 to start the second half John Dockery talked to Bobby Bowden about what he'll do in the second half well we'll just we'll try to start playing with some poise we played very sporadic we played with no poise penalties penalties just kept us backed up the whole first quarter we couldn't get anything going I'm hoping that last touchdown might have given us a little spark but if we don't start playing better defensively it's not going to make any difference because we haven't been Two times they scored. I think he's still talking. You got, that was earlier. <laughs> Had a lot of reasons why things weren't working out in the first half. But will there be that spark? Boy, here's a nice run to start it out. That's Amp Lee with a 16-yard gain tackled in the secondary by Williams and Smith. You know, I think Miami left them off the hook. They had the ball kicking off at the 50 and kicked it into the end zone, which allowed Florida State to have a touchback and bring it out to the 20. They should have just pooched it down inside the 10 and try to cover it. Try to pin them. Absolutely. Jesse Armstead, sophomore linebacker, will come out of the game. Very aggressive player, plays with great emotion. We'll get an update from the doctor as to the seriousness of Jesse Armstead's injury. So Michael Barrow comes in now at linebacker. What they'll do is they'll put Barrow in the middle and move Crum over to the side in the linebacking core. First and 10, Florida State. Edgar Bennett with a four-yard gain. Darren Krein on the tackle. In this quarter, Florida State has the wind at its back. With the wind here in the third. So trailing, this is obviously, you've got to make the most of it because there's a pretty good breeze out here today at the Orange Bowl. Can't expect to throw deep into that final quarter, into that win. Second and six pass, well short of Dossie. Shane Curry with pressure on Johnson. Knocked him to the turf. Jim, if you look at the season-long statistics, Miami, this is the one quarter that the Hurricanes have been outscored all year. That's the third period. Now, what Florida State has to do is get... Amp Lee involved in the ball game. He really wasn't in the first half. You've got to get Bennett more. Dossie outside. You've got to get him involved as a receiver. Only late in the second period when they scored on that touchdown did we see Dossie actually involved in that offense. Third down, seven. Complete. Reggie Johnson and a first down Florida State near midfield. The box for the 
Miami defensive coaches. Sonny Lubeck is the defensive coordinator. What are we doing, Mark? Had one of the best defenses ever last year at Miami. Tommy Tuberville, the linebacker coach. First and ten. Across the middle, pass was behind Baker. Smith knocked it away, but not a good pass by Johnson. By Roland Smith. Johnson looks like he's aiming the ball. He's just got to step up there and drill it. See this? Comes up on his toes almost and releases that thing very softly, just trying to put it in there in the zone. He's got to step up there and just drill that thing. Second and ten. The six foot six Brad Johnson, junior quarterback. Black Mountain, North Carolina, he's from. Throws it a little short. Scooped up by Bennett. And look at him fight to the 45-yard line of Miami. Darren Smith hit it first. Will set up third and three for Florida State. I think Bennett's been underrated most of his career. And if I'm playing in the Miami front seven, I'm keying on Bennett. He's a speed power combo back. He'll knock your eyeballs into your forehead as a blocker. He can run. He can catch. They've got to really get him more involved, as we said. Dawsey, Bennett, and Ant Lee, all three of those guys. Two tight ends. Two tight ends. Here's the defensive guys yelling two tight ends. They're going to a power formation. Warren Hart is the extra tight end for Florida State on third and three. Play action. Johnson with a poor pass to Bennett. Hamlet was coming in on him. Fourth and three now. This is a decision time for Bowden. He's going to punt it. Reggie Johnson is the up back for the Seminoles. Can never forget that play against Clemson. Here, here he is, Reggie Johnson. And he is close to the first down. And I don't think he got it. See Darren Smith, number 45, signaling short. Miami's already brought the offensive unit out onto the field, but first the measurement on that fourth down play. Fake punt snap to the up back, Reggie Johnson. Indeed, the Hurricanes have held. Russell Maryland, give him the credit. John Wimberly doing his best Academy Award performance. You've got to sell it before you'll make it work. Here it comes now. You just go to the up back. Now you got to push. Now, Russell Maryland, number 67, the All-American left tackle on the defense, comes up and forces it. He's playing with a broken bone in his foot. Crumb hit him, too. First down, Miami. And McGuire plowing near the 50. And moving in on 100 yards is McGuire. Let's go down to the doctor for a moment, John. You know, uh, Jim Nance, I'm just walking with Jesse Armstead, a fine sophomore linebacker. You see him going into the locker room right, right here with his right knee. They put in a splint. They put ice on it. He's through for the day and maybe longer. They're taking him in for x-rays. Also, an update on the Florida State side. Two of their substitute defensive linemen uh, are also out with they have um, pulled hamstrings. Back to you guys. Second down, four. McGuire, Searcy in front. First down, Miami. And put McGuire over 100 yards. Two backs over 100 for the Hurricanes. Steve McGuire and Leonard Connolly. What is going on? This is that upset Saturday that seems to sneak up on us every year in college football. This one's still in the fourth. Louisiana Tech. That's another, that, that kind of loss will send you right back to the hospital. <laughs> I'm telling you. Stomach acid starts working up again. McGuire with the first down carry for a yard. 
It's going to be interesting, Jim, to see what happens now with the number one team in the nation this week. Of course, you've got the University of Virginia unbeaten, putting big scores up on the, the scoreboard. Yet, I don't believe they're the best team in the country right now, but they're unbeaten and they've been playing as well as anybody. And it looks like they could go through unbeaten until they take on Georgia Tech. Michigan has that one loss, but they could be the best team now overall in the country. It's hard to imagine you could vote a team with a loss on October the 6th, number one already. That's my feeling. That's why I say I think you have to go with Virginia. Of course, Virginia's got two off weekends in October. That's not good once you have momentum. Second and nine. Erickson flips it over to Bethel. And he is somersaulting near the first down yardage at the 35. Buckley tackled him. left in the third quarter and it's 24-6 Miami again the story of the day in college football Stanford knocking off Notre Dame in South Bend Derek Brown you saw it at the half last play of the game had a chance to win it for the Irish dropped the touchdown pass that would have won it for Notre Dame third and two McGuire dives for the first that last move got him the first down Lewis Cristobal gave him a nice block as well. Crowd doesn't like the spot, and I don't blame him. I thought he had moved near the 34, but they're going to say the knee was down at the 35, so the measurement, it is not a first. Inches shy. will go for it and I don't think anybody's been surprised by the power of Miami the average 512 yards on offense per game but if they the way they've done it they've done it with passes then they've done it with run early on they dominated the the run running game early in the first half if you need your defense to make a big play this is the time for Bobby Bowden's team right here fourth and inches I don't think he got it Erickson sneak will be close. This is where the high-tech, high-entertainment game of football is very unsophisticated when the official comes up and marks it from 15 yards outside of where the line of scrimmage is. State short yardage defense did an outstanding job. The down linemen have to penetrate, make some penetration, jam things up in there, and the Miami offensive lineman really got clogged, and he couldn't get up over the top. We got another lineman down for Miami. It's Lewis Cristobal. Second Miami player in this quarter to be helped off the field. the defensive play that Florida State had been looking for. Crowd is upset. Upset at the third down spot on McGuire's run. Florida State will get the football back, needing some points in a hurry. Full in Miami. The longest home win streak in the nation. Division 1A belongs to the Hurricanes. 33 straight. They've won inside this stadium. How long has their home streak lasted? The last time Miami lost at home was Vinny Testaverde's first start for the Hurricanes. 1985. Amp Lee trying to get the corner knocks heads with Roland Smith after a six yard game all right Colorado has its hands full too with Missouri Andrea Joyce what's the latest Jim the Colorado Buffaloes without Darian Hagan are counting on backup quarterback Charles Johnson in the fourth quarter Johnson comes through with a 70 yard touchdown pass to Mike Pritchard and the Buffs take the lead let's go back to Miami that one's back and forth 
Doing a good job on those updates tonight, today out of New York. We'll keep you posted on that one. Second and four pass play complete to Dossie in the Miami territory inside the 40. Robert Bailey drags him down after 21 yards. This offensive line averages about 280 pounds without Robbie Baker. Baker brings it down. He's only 240, but this time everybody forms the pocket. He steps up in it. Waits until the very last second. Feels the pressure on the backside by Eric Miller. Looks across the middle, and Dossie comes in under the zone. Boy, that play. Johnson made it by just hanging and waiting and stepping up. First and 10. Still with time, now throwing back to the middle. At the 30, it's Dossie again. Michael Barrow on him. They spot it with the forward progress to the 28-yard line. We told you earlier that good receivers don't just rely on speed. They always work back to the ball. Watch Dossie now, the number two inside guy here, 29. See him? He's rolling outside with the quarterback, tries to skate with him. Now sees that he's got time, so he's got to free himself from the defenders and comes back to the football. Again, it's a big play by Dossie, and Florida State's on the move. With 8.35 left in the third quarter. It was 24 to nothing, Miami. It's now 24-6. Florida State driving. Roberts holds on, knocks down the defenders, and gets to the 18. A gain of 10. Dave Roberts. Good for another first down for Florida State. Johnson starting to heat up. Now, he came into this game ranked ninth, ninth nationally in Division 1A passing efficiency, completing two out of every three passes. He was 12 for 22 a little while ago. He just hit his last couple. First down, Florida State. The right side move for the Seminoles. Dead ball, dead ball. Ball start, Florida State, penalties, still first down. Eight penalties for 85 yards in this game against Florida State. Bobby Bowden going for number 200. Florida State trying to keep the longest winning streak in the nation alive. It would go to 15 if they somehow pulled off this major comeback. They would also be number one in the nation come Monday if that happened. First and 15, Amp Lee with very little room. Darren Smith and Eric Miller combine on the tackle. One team that will take advantage of a few of the losses today will be Houston beating Baylor in a conference game in Waco. Second down, 15. Out of the eye. Johnson out of the pocket. Falls down at the 20. Third and 12 coming up for Florida State. Jim, you talked about his athletic ability. He played on the basketball team, started 11 games. Stepped right in and became the starter at spring practice, and he's been there ever since. But the problem with that is when you start to tuck the ball away, he's six foot six, and although he is agile for a big guy, he runs in sections. So he just came up a little bit shy that time of where the original line of scrimmage was. He got, got down in a hurry. He's going to have to learn to slide. Yes. Well, it's basketball and football, not baseball. He doesn't know how to slide. <laughs> Third and 12. Caught by Roberts, well short of the first. Mark Caesar slammed Johnson to the turf as he came barreling in there, and Johnson really just had to get rid of it. Fourth and seven. And Bobby Bowden will kick the field goal. You're down 18. A successful field goal will move you within. Obviously, 15, which is two scores away. At least they're lining up for the field goal. 
in some help with some two-point conversions if they need it. Richie Andrews boots it through. 24-9 now. Nine unanswered points for the Seminoles. Are they on the warpath again? jam-packed Orange Bowl, over 80,000 folks here, and uh, I have a story about a mascot. I bet you thought being one was relatively safe. Well, not so for Sebastian the Ibis, who a month ago against BYU was on the sidelines. Wesley Carroll was rolled into, he broke his leg, he went to the Bird Sanctuary or hospital, if you like, but he's still having recurring <laughs> nightmares about that broken leg. Dreams nightmares, if you will. But it's hard to keep Sebastian the Ibis down. He's out here today with a splint on his leg and crutches. And uh, Sebastian, uh, what do you want to say to the folks? Hi, Mom. Yeah. Let's go, Canes. And uh, sorry, Lou. Now you're number two. Whoa, you know how they feel, <laughs> Jimmy Nance. Back up to you, Sebastian. Working the sidelines, even though he's injured. Okay, if feathers were flying out there, and Wesley Carroll ran into him. 24-9, Richie Andrews to kick. Tonight, game one of the American League Championship Series, right here on your baseball network, CBS. With you throughout the playoffs, the A's and the Red Sox. 8 o'clock Eastern time, that man, Dave Stewart, challenge Roger Clemens to say in the weather tonight will be clear skies at Fenway temperature in the 60s A's hold an 8-4 advantage over Boston this year <laughs> 540 left in the third quarter 24-9 Kings <laughs> McGuire dropped for a loss by Marvin Jones that's a big time play for a freshman he's been a seven or a seven old for most of his life mentally his brother fred of course played for florida state and bobby bowden told me wednesday up in tallahassee said i used to go to recruit fred he says this little guy used to sit there and just listen to every word i said i used to say how you doing little guy he says coach i want to play Second down, 12. Conley was shoved for a moment by Carruthers. No flag. Third and long coming up for the Canes. Got a couple of injury updates now from the Miami side. Lewis Cristobal was helped off the field because of leg cramps and will return. Jesse Armstead, they're not sure. He has a twisted right knee and will be evaluated tomorrow. Will not return to this contest. Claude Jones poked in the eye in the first quarter. He is back in there. Third and 12. Erickson is sacked for a loss. Todrick McIntosh and Anthony Moss. That young man right there, McIntosh, is from Richardson, Texas, just a freshman. Watch the twist they run. They bring McIntosh, number 94, to the right of your screen, all the way around. See him on the left side now? Nobody even picked him up. They couldn't even find him. Handy, the center was looking around for him. He was already by him. Excellent defensive X pursuit. Paul Snyder punting from the goal line with pressure. Buckley calls for a fair catch at the 46-yard line. That was a good punt, 42 yards without a return. But Florida State comes back out of the field. The momentum is shifting in their favor. Just crowd in the history of the Orange Bowl. 53 years worth of games here, five Super Bowls. This is the second largest, 80,300. Second only to the Notre Dame game here last November. Not bad when you consider Miami's first game ever. Back in 1926 against Rollins College, Drew, drew 304 spectators. 
450 Florida State students waited all night outside the ticket office, put up tents. Some didn't even have tents, just slept there all night trying to get the tickets that were available to the students in Tallahassee. First down, Florida State. Shaking free is Dossie in a nine-yard gain into Miami territory. Barrow and Smith. Darren Smith. Auburn wins it with a last, well, three seconds left on the clock. Von Weil kicks the 30-yarder, and Auburn remains one of the unbeaten. Yes, they have a tie, but could have been an L today against Louisiana Tech. This drive was Florida State's best starting field position of the day. Second and one. Ampley makes the move to get free and a first down. Florida State plays at Auburn in its next game, October 20th. left in the third quarter as we see Colorado tied now by Missouri a tying field goal in the fourth for coach Bob Stoll Tigers Wyoming is undefeated but deadlocked today at 35 in that contest still in progress first down Baker makes the catch takes it away from Bailey Gets to the 36-yard line. You've just joined us. Coach Bobby Bowden, his 25th year coaching football, 15th at Florida State. He is going for a milestone victory today, number 200 in his career if he wins it. And his team has the longest winning streak in Division 1A football, 14 in a row. Dennis Erickson, his second season at Miami, the defending national champion. Second down and four, Florida State going long. There's no receiver there. Only Hurley Brown with the interception. the target but this was way overthrown I'll tell you why it's underthrown Dossie was held that's the only way Brown made that interception because Dossie couldn't catch up to it when Dossie made his cut he got held almost tackled took him off his stride down to his knees and they couldn't recover 24-9 Miami and with the football McGuire to the 36 yard line Bill Reagan's on the tackle. Remember that play. That's a big one. Miami got away with one. It should have been penalized. Instead, they get the turnover. There's two ends of the spectrum. Curly Brown from Merritt Island High School was a teammate of Derek Brown. Tried to get him to come with him to Miami. Derek Brown today dropped. A game-winning touchdown against Stanford on the final play. Hurley Brown makes the INT here against Florida State. First and 10 run. McGuire near the 40. Johnson just cooling off. Florida State's defense now playing much more aggressively. Matter of fact, the Seminoles 110 yards now. Miami just 32 in the second half. Second and eight. Chudzinski, that pass had a little too much zip on it, I believe, for him to handle. 
He was open. Erickson fired it toward him. Rob Chudzinski will walk off the field. Last fall during their championship season, he graded out as a 4.0 student that semester. As he earned his degree in business, he's now pursuing his MBA. Third and eight. A little mix up on the cadence. Handy didn't snap it back to Erickson. That'll back up the Canes five. Dead ball. Ball start. Miami. Penalty. Still third down. Hurricanes, one of only four teams to hold a winning record over Bobby Bowden at Florida State. That's fairly impressive. Miami, in fact, has handed Bowden more losses than any other school. Ten. Third down. Complete. And then fumble. Ball is ripped free. Florida State with the recovery at the 43-yard line. hit by Simpson Simpson on the recovery Florida State has the football at the Miami 43 here it is again they cleared out the area they came underneath and then the strip just came from behind did he have the football long enough for a completion I, I think he did the defender came from behind him and had to strip him down from behind Florida State tried to advance it, but of course his knee was down as soon as he recovered the fumble. It was turnovers last year, which cost Miami against Florida State. Six of them. Five of those six were in the first half. That disastrous first half. Curry coming out on Johnson. Strips the ball free. Hayward Haynes tried to recover it for Florida State, and he has. Number 65, big Howard Haynes. Hayward Haynes on the recovery. Only senior starter on that offensive line. He's a good one, Hayward. And he made the big save here. Pressure came from the backside. Johnson never even knew it was coming. It was Curry. Curry comes, knocks it loose. Now watch, there's Haynes, 65, to the right of your screen. Ball bounces right to him. He loses it, and then pulls it in with that big bear paw of his. He reported it over 300 pounds. Now he's brought that weight down to 278. Second and 16. Again, a crossing pattern to Dossie. And the forward progress will bring him to the 39-yard line. Darren Smith, Michael Barrow combined on the tackle. But third down, about five coming up. And that was the final play of the third quarter. They will switch sides, switch ends. And Florida State will be playing into the wind in the final quarter. Trailing 24-9, and our coverage will continue from the Orange Bowl after this message and a word from your local station. CBS Sports coverage of today's CFA game is sponsored by Hewlett-Packard Laser Jet Printers. They'll get you noticed. Hilton, the world of Hilton, a billion dollars better. Hilton, it's all in the name. And by new Keystone and Keystone Light, bottled beer taste in a can. Wouldn't that be great? 24-9, Miami, ninth ranked in the country, beating the second-ranked Seminoles. Here's how we got to this score. A field goal by Huerta in the first quarter, got the Canes on the board. Then a touchdown run by Connolly from eight yards out. Connolly is over 100 yards in this game. He has scored two touchdowns, and he made it 17-0. Up top, they went to Lamar Thomas. Nice throw by Erickson to Thomas, 24-0 Hurricanes. Florida State in the final two minutes of the second quarter scored a nice catch and run by Dossie. Missed on a two-point attempt. And then in the third, they got the field goal by Richie Andrews. 24-9, Florida State facing a big third down play from the Miami 39 to start out the final period. They don't get it. 
Amp Lee stopped about three yards short. Now the update on that Colorado game. Let's go back to Andrea in New York. Andrea. Well, Jim, in Big 8 action in Columbia, Missouri trying to pull off its second straight upset. Kent Kiefer connects with Damon Mays' 38-yard touchdown pass, and the Tigers take the lead with less than 2.30 to play. Elsewhere in DeKalb, Illinois, Stacey Robinson of Northern Illinois broke an NCAA quarterback record today, 308 yards rushing. Let's go back to Jim Nance in Miami. We are back on a big fourth down play now. And complete to Dossie for the first. Bobby Bowden had to go for it on fourth and three from the 37-yard line. And across the middle, Dossie's eighth catch, over 100 yards, and the touchdown for the Seminoles. They're getting him more involved in the offense. That's the reason they scored the touchdown in the second period when they got him going in here again. They dominated the third period. Statistically, they only got three points out of it. But you're going to see Bobby Bowden now just pulling no punches. He's going all out. He's got to take chances and gamble all the way through. First and ten. Across the middle, Dossie takes a big blow, but holds on. Curly Brown delivered it. Hey, Dossie, he told us he loves that contact across the middle. He holds on every time. He likes to deliver the lick. I'm not sure he did that time. Second and three. First down, Roberts. First down at the 11-yard line. Gain of 13. Tackled by Darrell Williams. Last week, Florida State came from behind, down 21-3 to Virginia Tech. It was the biggest comeback victory for Bobby Bowden, 18 points while he was at Florida State. They're down 24 in this game. Now they're down 15 and ready to go in again. First down pass play to Dossie. No gain. Hurley Brown with the first contact. Daryl Williams finished him off. A lot of times they shadow Dossie. They'll play him man for man, and everybody else will go to a zone. It's almost like a box and one in basketball. That time, they had the strong safety, Hurley Brown, on him. And when Dossie came in motion, it came all the way across the field. Brown came with him, so there was no chicanery about it. He was right there when he received the ball. Second and 10 from the 11. Man is open, Roberts. And he is near the first. He does not have the first. It is third and less than a yard from just outside the one yard line. Lee flagged down. Amp Lee is in for a touchdown, but there are flags down on the field. Offsides, Miami scoring touchdown, Florida State. And they'll come firing back for a two now. A two-point conversion. No, he's got his kicker out there, Richie Andrews. Offside, defense, the penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. The touchdown counts. When Miami goes into a short yardage or goal line defense, a lot of times they get so close to the ball, they line up in the neutral zone. That was against Miami. They'll assess it later, but watch this now. A little trickery, you feel, maybe? Uh, I think he's just got to put this point on the board. He does. Andrews' kick is good. It's 24-16 within eight. 
the left side of the line. They kick it out. They bring it in, and look at this. Ampli just cuts it up there. Good trap blocking on the move. A little toss sweep. This play has always given Miami problems, especially when they line up in a 4-3 or goal line defense. Everybody gets blocked. They scoop them out. They cut back in, and he just takes it inside. Left side scores. The reason he kicked for the one and didn't go for two is because if he misses the two-point conversion like he did in the first half, he's down nine points. Then he's got to score twice. He's got to get at least a touchdown and a field goal. This way, by putting the short point on the board with the extra point, he knows he can come back on one touchdown, go for the two, and if he gets it, he's tied. With 11.30 left, he's gambling. He's going to get the ball back. Tell you what, had he gone for two and made it and then later scored, he would have faced another one of those two-point decisions, just like back in 87 when these two met. Tangled in Tallahassee to King down to a missed two there. But it's all moot now. It's an eight-point game. And tomorrow, the NFL today. Got some good games up for you. 12.30, start your day with us. Greg and the gang will be there from New York. And then the action, San Francisco and Houston. Those two teams are ranked one and two in the NFL in total offense. Saints against Atlanta, Tampa Bay, Dallas. For Jimmy Johnson, this is the first time he'll go against one of his former Miami quarterbacks. Vinny Testaverde, hats off to him. He leads the league in passing. As the Bucks are three and one, he'll go against his old Miami mentor tomorrow. That's some of the action. Check your local listings for the games and time in your area. That was a run by McGuire and a tackle by Henry Ostazewski. Second down and two. McGuire again. He was the big man in the first quarter. Just like this. Picks up a first down at the 35-yard line. He has 134 yards on the game. McGuire, back-to-back 100-yard -back performances for him. Now, let's check in on the uh, Bowden board, if you will. Coach Bobby here pursuing number 200 and bringing his team back. Son Tommy is the offensive coordinator at Kentucky. Mississippi beat him today. Terry is the head coach at Samford. And they are tied at the fourth. Another son is an assistant there. Bromley. Tackled by Abbott, but boy, he doesn't want to go down. Mark it across the 40. Conley has 145 yards rushing. Craig Erickson right now, Tim. I know he's concerned, but what's his strategy the rest of the way? He's seen them run off 16 unanswered. I think he's got to go back to what was so successful for him before, and that was the running plays. And he's pretty much doing that right now. Second and three. McGuire, first down to the 48-yard line. That'll make him feel a whole lot better. He told us yesterday this has been this past month the worst month of his coaching career. He's lost reportedly 15 pounds, not by choice. His stomach's been acting up. He's taking this season very seriously. Not by choice, but by pressure. Oklahoma came back to beat Oklahoma State. Sooners had the down three in the second half in that game. First and ten, Hurricanes. Play action fake. They like this play. It works again to Spencer. Daryl Spencer. And a gain of 20 to the Florida State 32. At the beginning of the game, we said that they wanted to play play action because it's a young, aggressive defense that overreacts to the fake. They did. They bit it. They took it hard. They got him in the seam and made the completion. than nine minutes remaining. McGuire.
to the 25, and the offense is starting to click once again. Mike Sullivan helped clear that way for him. Wide to the right. He's a backup. Second down for McGuire just breaking through to the 14-yard line. Just all kinds of room for McGuire. 12 yards this time. What's the left guard here, right here? He's the key to this play. Opens everything up, just forces it. It's crystal ball. Boom, stands up his man, moves him out, and here comes McGuire. McGuire, speed, power. I call him a dash and duck runner. Quick cuts, even when you think you have him, he spins, ducks, dashes away. Excellent speed. First down, Conley. Marvin Jones had him right away and never let go. Conley takes the handoff. He's cut. 555, Marvin Jones. Can't help but think what the coaches were telling us yesterday. They said this offensive line lacks continuity, consistency. Only have six guys, we move them all around. This offensive line today has been the story. That's, of course, the big story. This game will be a couple of paragraphs away from headlines tomorrow because of that. Second and nine. Chud out of bounds at the six, shy of the first. and a yard to go for the Hurricanes with 6.57 left on the clock. McGuire got it past the five. Craig Erickson lost his footing after taking a center snap just momentarily, still was able to make the exchange. They're going to measure. That was some collision after, after the handoff, though. First and goal to go. minutes on this drive after Florida State moved within eight. McGuire to the four. Marvin Jones on the tackle. We're starting to call that name with great frequency. You know, it's funny. I just locked on him that time. I wanted to see what he would do after reading his key. Made a terrific play. Just came up. No false steps. Read the play immediately and came up and made the stop. He is truly going to be a great one. And I, I know that's a superlative. Everybody says that word is overused. He's going to be a terrific athlete. Is one now. Will eventually be in the National Football League. Second and goal for the Canes. McGuire off left tackle down to the two. Marvin Jones again with the hit. Five minutes and 30 seconds left. Colorado has come back to win it against Missouri. 
in the final minute. Third and goal for Miami, trying to put it out of reach. McGuire for the touchdown. to make it 15. He does. 31-16. Yes, there are five minutes, seven seconds left, but it's a 15-point difference now. They say he gets stronger the more he runs. 29 carries, 165 yards. McGuire scores, and the Canes lead big. Very simply, the offensive line of Miami. Watch this. Cristobal will block here. Here comes Sullivan. He'll block here. Bethel, the tight end here, and a running back will take it. Watch this. Perfectly designed, perfectly executed. Let that baby roll and watch these guys block. One, boom. There's Cristobal. Here comes Sullivan. Bomb. Hook, push him out. Look at Bethel, 93. Jones gets a hand on him. Not enough. Miami puts its 31st point on the board. Yeah, go ahead, Lewis. Enjoy it. Give that offensive line some credit. Baker on one hop from the 10. Maurice Crum tackles him near the sideline at the 35-yard line. Let's go back now. Andrea Joyce with the update to New York. Great finish, guys, in Columbia, Missouri. Fourth and one, two seconds on the clock. Charles Johnson keeps it and goes in for the winning touchdown for the Buffs. Some other news for you. Mike Francesa reports that Miami will join the Big East Conference on Tuesday. Back to Miami. Well, first things first, Johnson wasn't in by, by very much, was he, Bill? No, he was. Score the touchdown for Colorado. Mike Trangisi from the Big East, their commissioner, is here at this game today with... Sam Jankovic, the Miami Athletic Director. Terrell on the reverse for Florida State, and Michael Barrow was waiting for him. Absolutely not fooled at all. Now, to follow up on what you were saying, we had a nice talk with Sam Jankovic before the ball game, and he indicated to us that he talked with Gene Corrigan this morning. Of course, the ACC is not ready to move. They had a tough time even getting FSU in, Florida State into the Atlantic Coast Conference. They want to make a decision here at Miami. So the ideal situation will be to go to the Big East, let them join there. They've got the, the four games against those teams, and they'll be able to schedule nationally. So it's a, a happy marriage for them. Second down play. Complete to Roberts, but about two yards short of the first. Four minutes, ten seconds left in the game. Now, the Big East would look like this. You got four teams right now with football, if you add Miami, Division I-A football, that is. Boston College, Pittsburgh, and Syracuse. Would Miami join them? Rutgers and West Virginia, possibilities, maybe even Virginia Tech if they wanted to make it an Eastern Seaboard Conference. But let me tell you, folks, this is really driven also by basketball and a chance to get Miami's basketball into the Big East. The fake reverse and Amp Lee running for the first and more into Miami territory and out of bounds at the 48. We'll get back to football in this game in just a second. But let me just conclude by saying this. Don't rule out an alliance between the Big East and the Atlanta Coast Conference either. Gene Corrigan still is very much in favor of doing that. But again, they'd have to sell the presidents and the athletic directors. There also could be an alliance between the, the Big East and the Southwest Conference in football. Schools are wanting to get to 12 teams so you can get a championship game playoff, like the SEC and the Big like The uh, SEC will have the opportunity. Pass. Oh, what a catch by Dawsey. One-handed grab still on his feet at the 30 and down at the 28. Or is he? voted on this team, Lawrence Dossie, as the most 
Well, the toughest player on this team the last two years. That's voted on by the coaches. This you, is an example why. You mentioned he's made a catch in 25 consecutive games. Look at this. None better than that. You know, that's impressive in itself. But uh, if I'm Miami, I'm more concerned with his average per catch, 20 yards, because you can't tackle the guy. Bumble on the exchange. And Miami has it. Russell, Maryland with the football. And that'll do it with three minutes left. Last year in this series, it was Miami that turned it over six times. This time, it's Florida State. This is the third turnover. That ball never came off the ground. It's hot here. It's humid. His hand slipped right off the ball. It was never snapped properly. Turnover. Of course, the Canes rolling over the Seminoles, 31-16. And I'm with the athletic director from the University of Miami, Sam Jankovic. And Sam, Mike Francesa moments ago just uh, announced that you would be heading towards the Big East very soon. What is the status of that situation? Well, the status is, is that we have a very important meeting with the Big East people here on Monday, and that'll go for the better part of the day. If everything goes very well, then we will meet on Tuesday with our administration, and then we will go ahead and take it to the trustees. But we still have a way to go. So no final decision has been made? No, not at all. And no final decision can be made until after we have that very important meeting and until we go ahead and show our trustees all the, the studies that we have taken. Sam, if you stick with us for a minute after this play, I'd like to ask you another question. Jim? Miami takes over after the fumble recovery. Connolly, a loss of a yard. Back to Doc. Sam, would it be fair to say that you're leaning strongly in that direction? I would say it'd be fair to say that we are leaning that way right now, and if we could put all, everything together, I really think that we'd have an excellent chance of making an announcement in the relatively near future, but you know how negotiations are in discussions, and uh, who knows what's going to happen. What is the key to this negotiation, to these conversations? Well, I think we have to find out more about the Big East academically. We have, they have to find out more about us. Uh, we have to find out a little bit more about the revenue sharing, what are their television plans. And really a very important issue of all is the football program and all of the other options and are we all in sync as far as those options are concerned and what will be the ground rule in putting all of them together would an alliance with the ACC and the Big East be part of that conversation definitely an alliance of the big uh, the Big East ACC Alliance Southwest uh, Big East will be also maybe a football conference only and also remaining as an independent and then also maybe going ahead and expanding the Big East a little bit. So there are five different options, and that's why we feel so good about it all. We are not narrowing down on any one uh, uh, package, and we can still remain a national program. And University of Miami must maintain its national level. What would an alliance with the Big East, if it should happen, do for the University of Miami? Well, what it would do for us, it definitely keeps our Florida-Florida State Series alive. It goes ahead and takes us into the Northeast. It takes us into some excellent areas as far as the ACC and still allows us to play in Texas and California. Sam, we're back to the action now. I know you're enjoying the game. Jim Nance, back to you. Steve McGuire running, breaking free on the sidelines and out of bounds at the 40. McGuire now with the seventh best all-time single-game rushing performance at Miami. 174 yards for McGuire and a touchdown. He actually, with that run, he moves into the fifth best performance by a runner. They haven't only been impressive, they've been emphatic. Third down three. 239 on the game clock. Does not get the first down, McGuire. Bryce Abbott on the tackle. Jim 
as they bring on the punt team, I, I want to make sure that we give enough credit to Craig Erickson today. You know, he's a very mature 21-year-old. He's become more patient, extremely comfortable in this offensive system. And he's really made this thing go today. He's mixed the play very well when they've come in, and he's, he's executed extremely sharply. All right, the down clock expires. It'll back up Miami for five yards. Delay a game. Paul Snyder, sophomore from Laguna de Gal, California. To punch for the third time. Do not forget that Terrell Buckley is the return man. Having taken back two for touchdowns in the first four games this year. Flag down at the line of scrimmage. Buckley from the 30. yard return to the 39 yard line near the now let's see what the penalty is here offside against Florida State which still would not give Miami enough for the first down so they're going to decline it and let Florida State take over from its 38 just a few minutes, we'll be selecting a Chevrolet most valuable player of the game from each team. And for the 20th consecutive year through the Chevrolet Scholarship Program, $1,000 will be donated to the General Scholarship Fund of each school. And they've changed quarterbacks. Casey Weldon comes in. He may have the stronger arm of the two. And with 1.41 on the clock, you need some magic and some deep passes now. Sideline route over the head of Dawson. I think you need more than magic right now. Now you're just playing for pride and just trying to get things done and accomplished. And Somehow you get a quick strike. Never know, but number 200 looks like it's going to have to be saved for another day for Bobby Bowden. His next attempt will be at Auburn on October 20. Second down play. Baker, shy of the first at the 47, about two yards short. It won't be long before Bobby Bowden gets it, though. I can tell you that. Every school has something to showcase. FSU chooses Bobby Bowden. 24 years, head coaching experience, 60 years on earth, which it, I think he's established himself as almost a saint. He's just a quality individual. Third down play. Weldon can run for the first. No. Throws it at the last second. And it's incomplete. Mark Caesar was after him. Today's game produced by Michael Burks and directed by Mike Arnold. College football out of New York. Produced by George Barrison, directed by Joe Terry. Senior producer of CBS Sports is David Winter, and Ted Shakers, our executive producer of CBS Sports. Back at the Orange Bowl, Tim Brandt played his final football game right here at the Orange Bowl for Maryland, 1971. Two. Two. Fiction in fact from Jim Zalman. I had you know that. <laughs> close. I knew it. Maryland against Miami. Things have changed dramatically since then. It was AstroTurf. My man had an interception and a fumble recovery for the Turks, but still not enough as the Canes prevailed in that one. <laughs> Digging up old scrapbooks. Fourth down and shy of the first. By a yard is Dossie. So Miami can now just run it out. Well, look at this. Look at the spot on this one. Let me not give it away so quick here. Let's bring some chains out and double check. And while they do, I might mention that kind of a special stadium also for the Dockster. John Dockery won a Super Bowl ring right here at the Orange Bowl for the Jets when they beat the Colts here. Perhaps the most famous Super Bowl in history. They give him the first down. Give him the first, and they keep the football with 55 seconds remaining. John Dockery led the Jets that day. Got a little help from Joe Namath. Another. 
another great grab by Dawson. Boy, is he impressive. And he stops the clock. Well, I'll tell you this. Casey Weldon really took a lick. Got hit from both sides just as he released the football. He was hit by Anthony Hamlet. And Dossie had enough presence to stop the clock with 43 seconds remaining. From the 28th, final minute. Weldon gets it to Roberts. And about a yard shy of the first. We got two timeouts left, Florida State. And they use one of them here. Leaving them with one. Half minute to go at the Orange Bowl. Ted, several huge catches in this fourth quarter. I mean, all kinds of talent to come down with the football. And this is his career day. 13 receptions, 160 yards, and a touchdown. Bobby Bowden used to be a wide receivers coach here at Florida State back in the 60s. They had a player by the name of Fred Bolitnikoff. And Bowden compares Dossie's consistency with that of the now Pro Football Hall of Famer. He also jumps ahead of Hassan Jones, who not a bad receiver. I'd say. They've had some good ones at Florida State. 30 seconds remaining and a timeout for the Seminoles from the 20. Into the end zone, Roberts, touchdown, Florida State. That looked easy enough. Never fails, prevent defense, loosen it up, hit the seam, split the middle. Now Florida State will go for two. Trailing by nine. quarterback and had it been a good throw they would have had the two but there was heavy pressure coming in on amp lee from darren smith for one there, maybe played for two at the other side. No, you got to go for it when you got it. It's been interesting to see this game come down to a decision like that. Miami could not have afforded a tie in this game already with a loss. Florida State, however, I think could have survived a tie at this point of the season, having no losses. But that's, again, that's something we don't have to worry about with a 31-22 Miami. And a reminder that tonight, the American League Championship Series gets underway from Fenway. We'll be there, CBS Sports, 8 o'clock Eastern time. The Oakland A's, are they invincible? We'll play against the Red Sox. Game one tonight. Those two-point conversions are always fun to talk about, though. I mean, it's a moot point now, but everybody remembers Bobby Bowden trailed Miami 26-25 in 87, went for it, didn't get it, lost the national championship. Jimmy Johnson had the same thing against Notre Dame. And how about Tom Osborne right here in the Orange Bowl? That exact same end zone where Florida State just scored. Richie Andrews will attempt the onside kick. Burley Brown came up to grab it from Miami. Did he hold on? Send guys down to clear out now and block. The ball's got to get there before you do. You almost have to get there at the same time. They did. 
Bobby's smiling. He knows this thing's in the history books. He'll have to wait another day for number 200. And Miami says they've got it. Got some Seminoles jumping up and down, pointing in the wrong direction. We showed you the top 10 ledger early in the game. Did we have any idea it was going to change? Hold on a minute. There's a fight breaking out on the field. Flags are down and the benches are emptying. State and Lamar Thomas from Miami went after it. They got it all going. And there's Freeman. The entire Miami team left the bench. They walked across that field. You can tell when guys are serious too. They're coming off the bench, going onto the field, putting their helmets on. You don't want to get into that melee if you don't have your helmet on. You don't want to get into it at all. They should all be on the bench. Saw so Mark Thomas put the helmet on real quick. Robbie Bowden running to the left of the screen to intercede. Erickson, the head coach of Miami, is definitely trying to change the bully and boast mentality or perception. I mean, we talked a great deal about that and the taking away the big play celebration and just wants this organization to show a lot of class. And he's not happy about that. Trying to turn it in from what has been one of Miami's vices into a team that might be known as Miami Nice. But that was not so nice. Not a way to end this game. I like that. Now the clock. Thank you. Hey, what this sets up, Tim. October 20th in South Bend. It's a one-game elimination tournament in the national championship race for Miami and Notre Dame. And we're going to be there. down there. There he is. John Dockery, take it away. Yes, I'm here with Dennis Erickson. An emotional win for you. I know how important it was. Uh, can you tell us about it? That was a great, great football game. We played extremely well, particularly in the first half. And uh, you got to give Florida State credit. They came out in the second half and played well. Two great football teams, and we just came out on top today. We played really well on both sides of the football. I know you uh, consider this incredibly important for the season and the national championship implications, but how in the world were we able to run so well against them? I'm sorry? How did, were you able to run the ball so well against him, in the first, well, especially the first half? Well, that was our plan. We were going to try to run it. And uh, the drive in the fourth quarter that we took it down to go ahead at the end was one of the best drives I've ever been around. And we felt we could run it, and we were able to execute it. You know, Dennis, is, uh, did this last incident, the little uh, the outbreak at the end of the game, uh, dampen the victory at all? No, because we weren't involved in the thing. And uh, our guys came back, and, and we, we didn't start it, so we weren't even involved in it. Congratulations on a big win for you, okay, Coach. Jim, back to you. 334 yards on the ground for Miami. And when we come back, Andrea Joyce and Mike Francesa from New York will be with you. <laughs> 